Oh, hey, um, hi there. Welcome back to Her Story. So let's continue going down the list of a bunch of keywords that I have accumulated from watching all these clips, and let's try to find some more information. Alright, so I've already looked into... Um, wait, have I looked into Diane yet? Yes, I did. Okay. So Diane is Eric's wife, and Eric is a friend of Simon. Simon's the person who was killed. Yeah, Eric was a friend of Simon's. Eric is the one who gave the watch to Simon. The apparently very expensive watch. Um, I believe they took a vacation in Rome, which is something that she mentioned. Let's search for that. Any more mentions of it? No, just the one. So I guess the vacation isn't important. Let's search for vacation. Nothing. Okay. I'm just gonna cross it off my list here. Useless. Um, let's search for Ernst Brothers, which I believe is the... I think it's a glass place or something like that. Where Simon worked with Eric. Once again, just the one clip. Yeah, let me just reconfirm that it was a glass place. He works at Ernst Brothers Glass, they do windows, all kinds of glass. Simon does more special work. Mirrors, feature windows, artistic things. Okay. Um, what else? What about The Rock? That's the name of the place where they would hang out, right? Like a pub or something? Here we go, a couple new clips. Let me just add these old ones to session to make sure I've got them in there. Oh god, I don't know. I mean, I guess The Rock. You've spoken to everyone there. Someone must have seen where he went. I don't know. So many things could have gone wrong. No, no one has been in the last few weeks. We had a plumber come in three, four weeks ago. Someone sang with you from the rock. So I guess they're asking if anyone, like, unknown or new to them had been around the house that could have maybe killed Simon. So this is back when she was just reporting him as a missing person and they didn't really suspect anything, it seems. Um, let's see if there's any more mention of this plumber. Nope, it's the only mention. Okay, Ernst Brothers, check. The Rock, check. Um, Peter. I have Peter written down in my notes. I don't know why. Who, who's Peter? I forgot. It's the Rockington Arms. The Rock. Oh, right. So Peter and Susan run The Rock. All right, so Peter doesn't come up with anything Someone. aside from this. But let's search for okay. Susan. Nope. Okay. Um, I already searched for Eve, right? Yeah. Um, I think I might be out of keywords. Yeah, I might actually be out of keywords. Okay, what's something kind of random I could search for? Something that isn't in my list. Um... Okay, here's some new stuff. It wasn't the present so much. It was one of those arguments that had been simmering for a while. The present was a mirror. A nice mirror. Wait, wait, wait. wait. The present was a mirror. A nice mirror. She mentioned... Um, she mentioned a broken mirror. Um, hold on, I'll wait for the rest of this to play out and then I'll go play that clip. A mirror. A nice mirror. He didn't break the glass kind of mirror a princess would have in a story. He made it specially for me. Yeah, so she mentioned a mirror before, right? Hmm. Here? Yes. No, no. No, no, that's not it. It's one that's long. 40, there we go, this one. It happened very quickly. Yeah, there we go. We cleaned up. We bagged up the broken mirror. Her clothes. They're gone. The broken mirror. Okay. So she's talking about the fancy mirror that Simon gave her as a present. You 
Yes, like a story, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Well, she has a knife. Uh, um, she's been cooking, I guess. She's been cooking him his favorite meal. Um, she's his wife. And he's asleep and she doesn't want to wake him because he's ill. That's why she's sad. Because he's ill and he might die. It's kind of a sad story, so I'm not sure it is. What's going on in that clip? What are, what are they asking her? They're showing her um, something, and it's like she's making up a story to describe what she's seeing? Are they asking her to make up a story? Like, look at this picture, tell me what you think is going on in it? It sounds like she's making it up, but why would they have her do that? I don't... Uh, um, she's been cooking. I don't get it. Well, she wasn't my real mother, but she raised me. Do you want to take the story? It's a real life fairy tale. It wasn't her mother, but she raised her. Alright, so let's search for that. Search for mother. And there's something else I was going to search for. Oh, uh, mirror. I haven't searched for mirror either. Let's search for the mirror. Oh, there's a bunch of mentions of the mirror. My name is Hannah. H-A-N-N-A-H. -N -N it's Pandre. It reads the same backwards as forwards. It doesn't work for merit though, it's not quite symmetrical, but well, I mean, you get the idea. Sorry. Hannah Smith, I live at 31 Gladstone Street. Alright, Hannah's also a thing I should search for. I wonder if she mentions her address again. My name is Hannah. Maybe I should search for Gladstone Street as well. Maybe just Gladstone. I'm gonna write that down as well. Gladstone. The mirror. I can't remember. I put it somewhere safe. Upstairs, I think. I haven't looked at it since. Silverleaf? No. And he normally silvers them properly. This mirror, it's supposed to look antique. The reflection isn't as good. It's the perfect mirror for someone who doesn't like to look at their own reflection. Did she not like to look at her own reflection? Search for reflection. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Hmm. Florence raised me in her home. Florence. I never left it. She kept me out of Florence, is that the name of her, her mother, who wasn't actually her mother, but raised her? She kept me out of sight. It wasn't odd for people to see a midwife with a baby, carrying in supplies, washing nappies, that sort of thing. I never knew any different. I grew up looking out of my window and seeing her across the road. I thought it was like a reflection in the mirror. She was me. Is she talking about a person who looked just like her? Wait, I don't get it, hold on. Florence raised me in her home. I never left. Alright, so Florence was a midwife, I guess. It wasn't odd to see a midwife with a baby, so nobody suspected. Why, why would it matter if they did suspect? I mean, was this... I don't get it. I mean, did the midwife not adopt Hannah? Or, or what?
Grew up looking out of my window and seeing her across the road. Who's her? Is she talking about Florence? But if she's talking about this midwife being her reflection, that doesn't make any sense. Obviously, the midwife was an adult and she was a kid at the time. So there's no way she'd describe her as her reflection. I think she's talking about somebody else. Um, Eve, maybe? Yes. The first time we saw each other, it was strange. We both realized at the same moment, I think. We must have seen each other before, but there was this instant when we first realized it wasn't a reflection. The reflection was staring back. I think I was five. It was my birthday. My reflection was wearing a party hat and waving. I knew what party hats were from books. And it suddenly occurred to me, today must be my birthday. I waved back and we just spent ages waving at each other and copying each other's movements. So there's some sort of, like, doppelganger twin thing going on, it sounds like. Mother wanted me to grow my hair long, but I kept cutting it myself. I wanted to look like my reflection. She always had short hair when she was little. Mother would hide the scissors, but I would find a way. Cut it with a bread knife, something like that. Oh my god, that must be hard. Cutting hair with a bread knife. We'd always leave her house and go on adventures, but I never could. Mother taught me at home, and I had books and TV. Oh, TV was magical, but it was only on when it wanted to be, so I spent a lot of time reading books. I wanted to see my reflection. I thought that if I touched her, something would happen. We would become one. One girl. The fairy tale was over, the witch was dead, and I'd be restored to my rightful place. It's a very bright reflection in the computer monitor. That was strange. Could really see the person's face for just a second, not enough to really see who they are. Maybe if I went back and looked at the frame, you know, extracted some frames from it, I could. Database checker. This was all red when I first started, right? So I think the green means this is the parts of the database I've accessed. So I guess I've only accessed like a really, really small part of everything. Okay, well I've got plenty of keywords to search for. So I've already done mirror, right? And I just did reflection. Yeah, um, let's search for... Mother. Okay. There's a girl and she's staring out of the window. She's sad. She's trapped. She's here. She's looking out the window because her mother won't let her out. Yeah, it sounds like once again they're showing her a photo of a situation and asking her to describe what she sees in it. I don't know if that's... is that a standard thing to do for detectives or for an interview? Also, I just want to point out that, um... Watching this is making me really, really hungry because the color of her shirt or coat or whatever that is looks like exactly like the orange color that you see on the packaging of a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. 
And now I really want a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Mmm. Reese's. I want to reach back in time and just eat her coat. I just want to go back 21 years and just eat her coat. It probably tastes like chocolate and peanut butter. I bet it does. It probably does. I would have been a good mother. I was young, but I would have been a good mother. She was a girl, by the way. A baby. Okay, I was, I was wondering. Yeah, was a baby a girl or a boy? So she was a girl. We were going to call her Sarah. Wait, were go wait what? I'm confused. I thought she was pregnant, like during these interviews. Oh, oh right, right, right. Um, she got pregnant, and that is, she got pregnant, and that's what made her family like want her to get married to Simon, right? And it sounds like she like her family pressured her or or them into the marriage after she got pregnant. And obviously they got married a while ago. So, yeah, she was she was pregnant back then, around the time they got married. And she also is pregnant, or, or at least says she's pregnant, um, now, during the times of the interviews. So this was, I guess, their first kid. And she's saying we were going to call her Sarah, and I would have been a good mother. So it sounds like the, the child uh, died. Sarah. Sarah. Simon wanted to call her Ava after his nana. But I didn't want her to have a symmetrical name. Didn't want her to have a symmetrical name? Why? What is, what is with this whole reflection thing? This mirror is good for people who don't want to see their own reflection. And when she was mentioning her name, Hannah, she said it's not quite symmetrical. I guess it goes back to when she was a kid, seeing her reflection. She has this... I don't, know, I don't know if obsession is the right word, but... Yeah, she has this kind of... Preoccupation with reflections. Alright, so they're going to call her Sarah. Let's search for Sarah. Alright, just the one clip. Okay. Uh, what about Ava? The other name that Simon wanted to call her. Nope, just the one clip. Okay. Um. I want to know if she talks about what happened to the baby. Oh, here's a bunch. We spent the wedding night in a hotel in Brighton. It would have been too much to do more. We were saving for the baby. It was wonderful to be in a hotel, away from home, just alone together. Since then, we've always tried to get away for our holiday. We couldn't afford our own place. Simon dropped out of school, went full-time at the Glaciers. That was Eric's generosity. We moved in with his mum and dad. They had a spare room for us and the baby, if it came. It was a nice change, time to myself, living there for those months. Full of hope. Yeah, that sounds lovely, actually. I mean, obviously things weren't great, because they were... It seems like they were pressured into the marriage, and, you know, they're living... Uh, with... Was it her parents or his parents? His mom and dad. Okay, so yeah, they moved in with his parents. So, obviously they didn't have a lot of money. And uh, Simon dropped out, so he didn't have that much of an education. But still, he was working full-time. They had a place to live, baby around the corner. That sounds pretty nice. No. I lost the baby. I had a miscarriage at eight months. We carried on living at Simon's parents until that was only a few months after. Oh, it's really sad. And until what? No. We carried on living at Simon's parents until it was only a few months after. 
and then something. It was after dinner. I had spoken to Sam's parents on the phone. I looked up for an early night and I suddenly had this thought. I think it was something his mother had said. She'd been speaking about old stuff, sad stuff, about when we lived there, about the baby. There's some boxes in the cellar, nursery stuff, stuff we never needed and I never had the heart to throw out. And I suddenly remembered that when I'd looked down there the week before, those boxes, that pile was in the wrong place. I went cold all over. I went down there with a torch and went straight to the back. And that's when I saw the bin bags. Pulled them open, saw the body. I screamed and that's when I called the police. Okay, so she's actually the one who reported the the body. Right, and let's go back to the what seems to be the confession. It happened very quickly. Cleaned up. We knew. We knew. Uh, you, I, we had an alibi. You know, the fact that she's, like, confusing I with we here. We knew I, we had an alibi. It sounds like she's talking about her and her reflection. And I think her reflection is Eve, but I'm not sure. But yeah, it sounds like she's talking about her and her reflection. But anyway. Had an alibi. We wanted the body to be found later. Better to keep the body in the house than risk being seen with it. So, based on that, it sounds like she is the one who put the body there. And she is the one who reported the body as well. Yes. It was a shock to him. I mean, we never thought it was possible. I don't know what he... I mean, I hadn't decided whether to keep the baby. I wasn't really ready to talk to him about it. Yes. Is this talking about the first time she was pregnant? With, uh, with Sarah? Or is this n now when she's pregnant? Um, it's not clear. Okay, um, let's search for her name, Hannah. Oh, that's her structural lie detector, isn't it? Yes, my name is Hannah Smith. Oh, shit. Sorry. Wait, shit, sorry, what? Is that not her name? Yes. Miss Hannah Smith. Oh, shit. Sorry. Wait, I thought that was her name. <laughs> Is her name not Hannah Smith? Isn't it Hannah Smith? My name is Hannah. H-A-N-N-A-H. It's Pandre. Smith, Hannah Street. Smith, Hannah Smith, wait a minute. Let me just check one thing first. I don't think this is it. Dates. <laughs> wait a minute. These aren't the same person. This is her reflection. That's why she's saying... Yes, my name is Hannah Smith. Oh, shit. Sorry. 
she confused herself with her reflection. That's not Hannah Smith. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, I'm just like bashing myself in the head right now. She's talking about her reflection looking just like her. Why didn't I think that... Why, why did I assume that all these were from the same person? Why? Why? <gasps> this game is awesome! Oh my god. Okay, so then what's her name? Um, I'm guessing, again, that um, her, her reflection was Eve, her childhood friend. So, let's search for my name is... Maybe she mentions her name. My name? Yes, yes, your name, your name. That was the only question I failed. <laughs> your lie detector works. By the way, lie detectors don't really work. I mean, they... Well, let me put it this way. A lie detector will work if the person taking the lie detector test believes they work. Because then they won't want to lie, right? Because they think it'll detect their lie. But in reality, lie detectors are bullshit. Anyway, what is your name? What's your name? your name? This game is teasing me. It knows. They did this on purpose. They totally did this on purpose to make it hard to find her name. He saw me singing. One of my shows. Pure chance. Not sure I remember what he was even doing there. Afterwards, I had a drink at the bar and he came over and we got talking. I knew who he was. Obviously I knew who he was. But he didn't know who I was. He was fascinated by the likeness. Mm -hmm. He guessed my name from my tattoo. Tattoo? <laughs> Told me it was a palindrome. Like that would impress me. I enjoyed talking to him. It was amazing to be able to sit and interact and talk to him after all this time. He didn't tell me he was married. I'm not sure what he was thinking. He later told me it was like he was dreaming. A waking dream. Well, that confirms it absolutely. Yeah, this is not Hannah. Alright, tattoo. So I think that's going to be the key to her name, maybe. Told me it was a palindrome. Well, yeah, I mean, it's got to be Eve, right? Because Eve is a palindrome. E-V-E. -E. Backwards and forwards. E-V-E. E-V-E. -E. <laughs> this game is brilliant. I'm so glad I didn't read anything about it. If I had had that spoiled, that I'm not looking at clips from only interviewing Hannah, but actually her twin reflection. That would have taken that moment away from me. That was so cool to find out. That moment of realization when she said this. Yes, my name is Hannah Smith. Oh, shit. Sorry. That's such a brilliant way to tell somebody, you know, to basically tell me that this isn't actually Hannah, but without, you know, just feeding it to me. I have to actually figure it out. The clue is right there, but that's such a cool way to do it. Okay. Search for any other mentions of palindrome. No, nope, just a couple. What about the tattoo? No, he doesn't have any tattoos. He has a scar down here near his stomach, past his hip. Cut himself with some glass. That was before, a long time ago. He looks just like the photo. Um, He's not got his glasses on here, though. He takes them off with the camera. But he needs them to see properly, you know. He has to read a newspaper or a menu in a restaurant. Not books so much, or watching TV. He likes TV. Oh, my tattoo. <laughs> I got it to express my individuality. It's an apple and a snake. So I moved out. 
got a small bed set, got my tattoo to mark the occasion. I was singing in a bar in the evenings, so I had some money, enough money to cover my rent. And I've been doing something similar ever since. I haven't put down any roots. I don't exist. Okay, so she hasn't made any, like, strong connections to Tyre to any one place. Um, she's a singer, so she must be the one who was playing the guitar. Right? It's gotta be her. You In fact, you can even see her tattoo, just barely, can't you? On her arm. Not the world's greatest guitar Yeah, it's, it's cleverly hidden from the camera most of the time, but right in the very beginning, you can just see it right there. That little bit of black. Say something? Wait a minute. These are unwatched? I thought I searched for guitar and watched all of them. No. No, Simon didn't play guitar. He wasn't very musical. He liked to listen, but he was tone deaf. Yes. Yeah, it's my guitar. Well, now for every one of these clips, I'm just wondering, who is it? Is it Hannah or is it Eve? If she's wearing anything that covers up her tattoo, then it's really hard to tell. Alright, so I've searched for Hannah, I've searched for Tattoo. I already searched for Eve, right? Didn't that come up with too many results? A little bit too many results. Hmm. Hold on one second, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, let's search for Florence, which I believe is the... Um, the person who raised Hannah. Five entry is perfect. Across the road, where my parents first lived there, was a midwife called Florence. When Hannah was born, I was born at the same time. The midwife was there to help. I'd been throttled by the cord, probably wrapped around my neck by Hannah. The midwife told my mother I was dead. But I wasn't. She wrote all this stuff in a diary. Amazing what people will admit to on paper. Wait a minute, the midwife... ...lied about her being alive so that she could keep her for herself. Why? Hold on, I need to watch that again. Across the road, where my parents first lived there, was a midwife called Florence. Okay, so this is Eve talking. Yeah, this is Eve talking. Hannah and Eve were born at the same time. The midwife was there to help. Help with... Well... With who? With Hannah or with Eve? With you? If they were born at the same time, she couldn't have helped both, right? I'd been throttled by the cord, probably wrapped around... Okay, the midwife was there to help. It sounds like she had some issues with the umbilical cord being wrapped around Eve's neck, so it sounds like the midwife helped Eve. And the midwife told Eve's mother that Eve was dead. But I wasn't. She wrote all this stuff in a diary. Amazing what people will admit to on paper. Oh my god. <laughs> There's that reflection again. I want to go back and just like 
extract uh, like the perfect frame for when her face is, the person's face is as illuminated as possible to see who it is. If I could just see it for a little bit longer. Okay, so it sounds like that's why Eve doesn't have any connection or any roots anywhere, right? Because she's dead, right? I mean, like to the world, she's dead because she was reported as dead. So she never got a birth certificate, right? Or a social security card or, you know, whatever the equivalent would be where she was born. She never got any of that, so she doesn't have any of that stuff and for all intents and purposes, she doesn't exist. Florence took me home with her. Mother hadn't been expecting twins and had a healthy baby. I guess she was just happy for Florence to clean up. Okay, I was thinking it seemed like a very strange coincidence for these two people to live next to each other and happen to look exactly the same. So it's not just a crazy coincidence, they are actually twins. And that's why she said probably um, the umbilical cord is probably wrapped around her neck by Hannah. Because they were, you know, both... They're, they're twins. They're next to each other. So why did the midwife take... Uh, why did the midwife take Eve? Maybe she just really wanted to raise a kid. I, I don't know. Maybe she really wanted to raise a kid and she couldn't find anybody to have a kid with or maybe she wasn't able to actually have a child for some reason. You know, maybe she had some issues or maybe she's too old. Uh, it's possible. I guess she was just happy for Florence to clean up. Take away the evidence that this was anything but a happy occasion. Whoa. <laughs> Cop cars, sirens, uh, lights just illuminated my face. Did these two ever... Were they ever interviewed at the same time? Hannah and Eve? Florence was a warm, kind person. But she was broken, I guess. When I found her diary, I also found a biscuit tin with other stuff in it. All the papers, letters, that kind of thing. Her story was in there. I never really spoke to her about it. I was far too young to really understand. I guess I just put it together later, once I was older. She had loved children, planned to have a large family. But her husband died in the war. Hmm. And that was back when you married for life. She never felt like she could marry again. Isn't that strange? She was a widow from her twenties. But, I mean, I guess it was different then. You know, you married for life and she felt she could never marry again. I guess it was harder, a war widow. One of the dead. I don't know, maybe there was more to it than that. I don't really know. God, that would be horrible. Having your husband die when you're in your 20s at war and then never feeling like you could marry again. From your 20s? So, so young. That's just sad. Okay. No. It was just me and her. Eve was the name they were going to call their first child. They talked about it and were going to try when it came back. Florence's family had a history of first-born girls, so they were convinced it was going to be a girl. It's hard to know if this is all true. These are stories I remember that I read when I was a child. Maybe I misread. 
maybe I misunderstood. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to remember what happened last week. Yeah, stories, um, human memory is very fallible. And stories twist and change, and people can tell things they believe to be true that just aren't true. But they think it's true, because it's just over the years, changed in their head, and they just don't remember it correctly. No. Memories are a fickle thing. What to search for now? Um, let's search for Gladstone, the street where they lived. Uh, just one mention of it. I already searched for Mother. I already searched for Florence. Um, Florence story now. I want to know more about Florence. Why did she do it? What about war? One more mention and okay, one more mention of war. Probably talking about Florence and how her husband died at war. When we weren't together we'd send secret messages by tapping out a code that we'd learn from a book. The not code. Something prisoners of war would use. We'd tap them out on radiator pipes or the attic floor. Wait a minute. I've heard the tapping before. There was one clip where... I was gonna say Hannah, but I'm not even sure if it was Hannah. Uh, Hannah or Eve. Where she was, like, exasperated. She was... I, I think I even remember the clip. She's like, uh, she's frustrated. She's like, Hannah, 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 why did you mention... Uh, what was it? Why did you mention something? And then she's tapping something. The knock code. Is this a real thing? If I can actually, if this is a real thing and I can look up the knock code, then I could decode whatever she tapped. Pipes or the attic floor. Okay, so I'm gonna add this to session and I'm gonna add a user tag. Knock code. Let's add all clips that have her doing that. Or have I shouldn't just say her, because it it's both Eve and Hannah. Let's have let's um tag all clips that have anybody doing a knock code. With knock code. And there's one more that I've already seen. Um Yeah, I think she said like why did you have to say why did you why did you something? That one's unwatched. Alright, that's not it, but let's watch it anyway. What did your wife do? She didn't kill you. You think I killed Simon because he was having an affair? Well, I didn't kill him. I wasn't even there. I was in Glasgow worrying about whether my baby was still growing inside me. I mean, why would I kill Simon? I loved him! Wait, who is it that's pregnant? So, it's Eve that's pregnant, not not Hannah? I'm getting so confused. Now I, all the information I assumed was Hannah is not necessarily Hannah. What did your wife do? She was having an affair. Well, I didn't kill him. I wasn't even there. Simon was having an affair. With who? I Let's search for knock. Maybe she's mentioned the knock code before. And I also want to search for affair. I gotta write these things down before I forget them. Knock. Affair. Let's leave the affair for now. Let's just hone in on this knock code. Okay. So she only mentioned specifically the knock code once. What clip was it where she did the knock code? Why'd you have to mention... 
Sarah? No, why'd you have to... What did she say? Why'd you have to say... Why'd you have to say... Yes. No, it's not any of these. I don't even, I don't even think she was wearing that. I think she was wearing s something reddish or orangish. Um, crap. Oh, this is going to bother me if I can't find it. She was exasperated. She was saying, like, why'd you have to mention something? She was tapping on the table, and then somebody came into the room, and then she instantly, like, straightened up and, like, smiled and, you know, composed herself. Why say... why no? It was a name. It was a name. Why? There's a bunch of that I haven't actually seen before. Um, is there any chance I have it here? I don't think so. Yeah, I think it was one of these, where she's wearing the the Reese's colored coat. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's there. Oh, maybe it's one of these. It might have been this. Out of the building. Are you out of the? Um, was it lawyer related to lawyer? Was it one of these? No, that's the one I was just. Please. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna try to find it. I'll be right back. Oh, oh, here it is. Why'd you have to mention um, Eve or something like that? This has got to be it right here. <sighs> Hannah, Hannah, Hannah. What are you doing talking about Eve? Okay, yeah, and then this is where she taps, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, that's the one. All right, so I've got these two clips. Okay, so I am going to look up the knock code right now, and I'm going to decode those. So I will be right back. Okay, whew. Well, I think I finished the translations. That only took me, like, 20 freaking minutes. No, I'm not even kidding. Um, without the ability to play these clips in slow motion, it is extremely, extremely difficult to actually do them fast enough. So as you can see in the bottom right of the screen, there's two different things. There's the one thing which explains how the knock code works. The decoder for the knock code, I guess you could say. And then also the translations. So yeah, the knock code works... Um, you designate a letter in the knock code by two sequences of taps. The first tap tells you the row, and the second tap tells you the column. So for example, let's go to the first one here. One, two, three. One, two, wait, so, one, two, three, one. All right, and then if you look at the uh, thing in the bottom right of the screen, that was one, two, three, one. So go to row three, and then go to the first one in that row, which is L. So yeah, that's how it works. Pretty simple. But without being able to play these clips in slow motion, it is painstaking to do this, because I can't do it anywhere near fast enough. And so, just to find out, like, uh, and then I get lost as to... You know, which letter am I actually on, so I have to play the whole thing from the beginning, like, every single time. It's it's really, 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 really difficult. Very, very annoying. I'm very aggravated right now. But, anyway, so this is what I've learned. This, uh, this is the first one I translated here. And, again, it's really, really hard to tell, and I kept losing my, my place, but... I went over it a couple times, and I think what I typed out there is what she says. Bide bid the Hannon? I thought she was... Like, I, I quadruple checked to make sure that she wasn't spelling out Hannah. And I don't think she is. I'm, like, certain the last letter that she says is another N. So, I don't know what that means, if that's somebody's name, or if it's just gibberish. I don't know. Uh, but this one, in this one, she definitely does say something. This is when she's, like, exasperated. 
Hannah, Hannah, Hannah. What are you doing talking about Eve? And then she taps out. Love you. And then right after tapping that out... Poor Simon. She says, love you, and then poor Simon. Poor Simon. So I think she's talking about Simon. So really quickly, let me just search for bid, buy, whatever. Is that a thing? Or did I just translate that wrong or what? Okay, yeah, I don't know what's up with that. It's really hard to translate. If I translated that wrong, uh, somebody please tell me. I feel like that knock code is gonna come up again. Let me just get rid of those window captures. There we go. Yeah, I feel like there's got to be other clips where she does it. I mean, how many have I actually even seen? Yeah, I've only seen, like... What is that, maybe a third of the clips? So it's probably going to come up again. Okay, well, I've cracked the knock code. The most secure of all communication protocols. The first one seems to say... Bidhenen, which I probably mistranslated or something, and the second one says, Love you. Okay, well, I think that's a pretty good place to end the episode. Yeah, this has been a very event-filled episode. We've, we've learned so much. Just in summary of some of the main main things we've learned. Um, we've learned that I haven't been looking at clips only from Hannah. I've been looking at clips of interviews with Hannah and with Eve who were actually separated at birth and were twins, Eve having been stolen by the midwife, Florence, who lied to Eve and Hannah's mother, saying that Eve was dead, but she actually wasn't. Florence just wanted to raise a child. And she lived right across the street from Hannah, so Eve and Hannah grew up just watching each other from afar, noticing how similar they looked, because they were twins. So, that's pretty big. <laughs> that's freaking huge. And we learned about the knock code. Alright, so, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.